How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with another video for you all today. And in this video, I really wanted to take a few minutes of your time and talk to you about the newest fighting game soon to come out, Samurai Showdown. More specifically, I really wanted to talk to you about what Samurai Showdown is, what you can expect if it's going to be your first time jumping into a game like this, and just in general, a few of the qualities that make it really exciting in my mind to play a game like this. But admittedly, those same qualities could very well be reasons to stay far away from it if you're just not into that type of fighting game. Game. A few of those qualities in my mind have to be the overall speed of the game, the relatively lower barrier of technical skill needed to succeed in this game at a high level, and of course the third and most important quality in my mind is the intensity of this game during the neutral, uh, mostly as a result of all the big damage being swung around. I mean seriously, just, just look at this hammer move. That That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it though. Now I kind of want to go back to each of those points individually and expand upon what I mean when I say things like the game is overall a pretty slow paced one. So in Samurai Showdown, a 2D fighter, you mostly retain all of the same movement options you can expect in a game like Street Fighter. It definitely isn't an anime fighter where you'll be dashing in the air or in Dragon Ball Fighter's case, super dashing across the screen. This one is much more grounded based. You're going to be using that slow walk speed a lot more going back and forth, trying to space out those very important normals. Spacing in this game, I cannot stress this enough is going to be very important. You're going to want to really know those walk speeds and how much you have to walk forward to get a certain move to land while also being outside of your opponent's striking distance. In contrast to this though, the dash speeds in Samurai Showdown are actually pretty fast. So sometimes when your opponent's anxiety is at its highest, you're going to want to just dash in there and go for a throw or something like that. But even with those faster dash speeds, you'll find most of the time you're going to want to rely on the walk speeds which are just a lot slower. And as you would expect, if you're going to be on the ground a lot more, the projectile game becomes a lot more important. So you can expect to have to jump over fireballs, things of that nature, participate in that fireball game. Uh, you don't want to lose out on that. You want to throw out as many projectiles as you can to encourage your opponent to make a risky mistake and you know jump in when they shouldn't have so you can get some big anti-air damage off uh, and overall just get the pace of the game working for you instead of your opponent. Another reason why I say the game is overall slower paced than other fighting games is because combos in this game are relatively short. I'm talking like two to four hits is going to be like some of the bigger combos you can get uh, with some characters. I don't want that point to scare off too many people though, because of course there are characters that can get a lot bigger combos uh, depending on what starters you get. If you are looking for something like that in this game, you can still enjoy it. Yoshi Tora comes to mind when I think of flashy combos and an overall faster paced game. So definitely look into that if you want to play a game like this, but you also want to impress your friends. But yeah, for most characters, you're just going to be looking for some slashes and some block strings, uh, maybe a couple hits into a DP or something along that line. It's again, I know I'm comparing it to Dragon Ball Fighters a lot, but it's the game I play the most. It's not like any character you pick up, uh, their BNB is going to be 30 hits. And the point about the combos being shorter also has to do with my second overall point, of the game requiring less technical skill than some other modern fighters. Overall, I see this as probably the point that most people will be able to agree on. Samurai Showdown is definitely not a Tekken 7 per se, where, you know, mastering a character can take many months, if not even years, if you want to be the top of the top. But it's not like the game is achieving this by dumbing down certain aspects of the game of, or getting more casual, as some people say. It really is just a byproduct of the combos you have to learn being shorter and not requiring too many special inputs or anything like this. Because of that, you can totally play Samurai Showdown on just about any peripheral you want while not really giving up any competitive edge. Just wanted to add a quick side note here that when I talk about requiring less technical skill, that doesn't mean skill overall. If you play against somebody that's been playing Samurai Showdown for a while, you will definitely feel that it will still be a struggle for you to get that win. Just thought I should add that on here in case people thought I was saying that the game was easy or something. Totally not the case. Moving on to my third and final point about what you can expect from Samurai Showdown, I believe I mentioned how high intensity the neutral is in this game uh, and how that's most because of the damage. And I 100% stand behind this fact. This is what makes me really enjoy Samurai Showdown. Uh, it's a feeling unlike a lot of other fighting games. Knowing that you have to space those moves properly or else you're going to take a huge hit from like a heavy slash or, or maybe they spend that rage art to slice right through you. It can be an absolute blast just when you and your opponent are walking back and forth and nothing's happening on the screen. And that's really why I think the damage is there. I mean, yeah, it does look flashy saying you can finish people off in like one hit or something or an unscaled super does 70% 
percent uh, or even something like that hammer clip i showed earlier that just does an insane amount of damage really i think those big numbers are there as more of a scare tactic to keep you playing a slower paced game you know one mistake could take 20 percent of your life bar and then you really only have three mistakes left until you're dead unlike my last point how i talked about everybody could probably agree on that one this is what i think is going to separate people that really love the game uh, from people that just aren't going to enjoy it too much. As a plus side though, when you make a mistake in this game, you're not necessarily being punished with a very long combo that you have to sit and watch. You're instead being punished by immediately being stripped of that life bar. So whichever one you prefer, you should definitely know that before heading into this game. That was pretty much it for the overall basis of what you can expect on a ground level going into the game. Uh, now I kind of want to talk about some mechanics the game has uh, and how they affect gameplay. J you know, basically just the ones you're going to see a lot. So in this game, you have three different types of supers. You have the weapon flipping technique. This is probably going to be the one you see the most often as it is a normal super that you can cancel into and it disarms your opponent, which means their weapon of choice goes flying off to the side uh, and then they have to fight with only their bare fist as long as you don't let them go pick that weapon back up. Super powerful allows you to control that space like we talked about in this game. That's going to be super important. Uh, meanwhile, your opponent is already fighting at an inherent disadvantage because they lose out on range, damage, etc. Basically everything that would come with their weapon. The other super is the one that you're going to see in a lot of online videos, especially here when I start doing ranked videos, because these are the ones that if you hit them unscaled, you can expect to do 70% damage, uh, crazy stuff like this. They all have relatively cool animations. Uh, it's different for every character, so you're going to want to get in training mode and experiment with that uh, and see which one you like the best. The last sort of super move, if you can call it that, uh, comes after your rage explosion, which allows you to use your rage gauge uh, once it's gone, by the way, that's it. It's gone for the entire match. So if you want to use this optimally, make sure you're using it where you need to use it, like the last round of a match, for example, uh, because what this move allows you to do is one, while you're in rage, all of your normals hit a lot harder. And if you want to go ahead and spend that resource right away, you can instantly slice through your opponent really quick. I'm talking like if you see your opponent click anything, you could probably punish them with this. And if you hit it unscaled, it does a ton of damage. Uh, if you do it off of a grab, of course, that would make it guaranteed. So that's scaled down pretty heavily but anywhere else this is going to be your go-to option when in rage and trying to snipe that last bit of health off your opponent apart from that the other mechanics i wanted to talk about were the defensive option in this game give you your standard blocking which is going to be even more useful in this game because when your opponent does go for those riskier moves uh, their character will yield back when they hit a blocking opponent uh, leading to some very easy punishes you also have your deflects which serves as the game's perfect guard system if you hold back just as an attack connects uh, you'll get this little spark uh, and it'll be easier for you to get those punishes off. So already you should kind of be getting the picture here of how these systems influence the gameplay. Uh, it's very read heavy, very slow, like I've said all video long, but also very rewarding for mix-ups. That's another thing I should mention here. Uh, just because the game is slower paced and more spacing oriented doesn't mean there aren't different kind of characters like zoners, rushdown, balance. Uh, all of these things, mix-up characters, all of these things exist within this game. Hanzo, a character I've been looking forward to playing a lot, specializes in throwing out one projectile uh, and then immediately going into set play which basically means uh, uh his mix-up auctions you, you want to set up that vortex as soon as possible he has a teleport that can hit overhead a teleport that just keeps him in place and a teleport that does a low and he can also cross up uh, on whichever side he chooses to so yeah if you're into mix-ups if you're into reading your opponent this is also the game for you. But that is pretty much all I have to say about Samurai Showdown in this video. Of course, if you want to see more videos on it, there should be some more ranked videos on this channel eventually. The game comes out very soon, June 25th, I believe. So ranked videos will start coming in on this channel right then. I might even be streaming it over on my Twitch page. Yeah, I don't really know. You can expect to see a lot more Samurai Showdown from me. If there's anything specific you want to learn about Samurai Showdown, just let me know down below in the comments and I will try to make a tutorial-like video for you on that as soon as possible. And of course, if you just want to watch more Samurai footage gameplay right now, the places where I got this footage from will be seen down below on the pinned comment. Uh, so make sure to go check down there if you want to watch even more gameplay to really decide if this is something you want to buy into or not. And the last thing I want to say, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this without it sounding like a commercial uh but please know this isn't sponsored or anything i'll prove it fuck samurai showdown it sucks <laughs> but no seriously uh i just to save money if you do know for sure that you want this game make sure you want it for sure if you buy it within five days or pre-order it you get the first season pass all of the characters for free uh 
you know, that just seems like something I should mention to people because I know if I was going to buy it anyway and I just felt like waiting for the first five days, I would be pissed if I missed out on that deal. So I just want to let you guys know that again, not sponsored. Fuck this game. It's garbage. It sucks there. <laughs> Hopefully that proves it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and be getting out of here now. Leave me a like and comment down below if you have any questions about Samurai Showdown or my plans for videos on it on the channel. And make sure to subscribe if more fighting game content from me sounds good. If you want more videos from me right now, there should be some on your screen. I have been Dr. Doya. I will see you in the next video.